Okay, now for question number 17, uh, here we have a trapezium and this trapezium we are asked to find the area of it. Okay, so in this trapezium, to find the area of a trapezium we need certain bits of information um, which are the length of the parallel sides and also the height of the trapezium which is basically the distance between those parallel sides. Now in this particular trapezium here we have the, the lengths of the two parallel sides here, which are 8 and 12. How do we know they're parallel? Well, because here we have these two angles add up to 180 degrees. So if that's 19, that's 90, they add up to 180. So these are considered as interior angles. So these two sides are definitely parallel. And this is the height of the trapezium, okay, which we have to find. Now, some people use uh, different methods to find the um, area of the trapezium. Some people would do the following. They would split up the, tr the trapezium into two parts, one part being a triangle and one part being a rectangle and they would find the area of the, uh, area of the triangle and then the area of the, of the rectangle and they would add those together which is perfectly fine but personally for a few reasons, for a few reasons I prefer not to do so. Okay, I prefer not to do so for a few reasons and one of those reasons is um, that knowing the area of trapezium will help you a lot in, in different topics. So what we need to do is we need to think about the area of a trapezium formula which is given by h over 2 times a plus b. Some people mem memorize in different ways. They have h times, um, they have a half times a plus b times h. There's different ways of doing it. It's the same thing. And I, I, and I memorize this formula in, in such a way that it reads the height or the h, which is the difference, the distance between the parallel sides, which is this, divided by 2 times the sum of the parallel sides. So that's your a and that's your b or vice versa. Now, what I want to do is to show you where this formula comes from. Because as I said, I like to, um, you know, try to get people to understand where these come from rather than just memorizing because then it helps you to understand better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an exact copy of this trapezium and I'm going to turn it upside down and I'm going to join oops, try and do it nearly so it's exactly upside down I'm going to join that side the parallel, that, that slanted side with the, the slanted side and I think you can see here that we end up with one big rectangle okay now if this is A and this is B if you, if you notice this side CD is replicated on this side so this is also a and this is also this is b here if that's from a to the a to this this length b is the b this is going to be the same so the total uh, length of this rectangle is a plus b and its height is h so if we take the area of the whole rectangle the area of the whole rectangle you're going to have the width times the length so it's going to be h times the length which is a plus b now, remember, we're only concerned about a half of it. So if we take away that half that we put there to kind of help us understand, we're left with a half of the area that we have before. So just divide by two. That's where the formula comes from for the area of a trapezium. Okay, so it's something that's useful for you to understand. Okay, so now, in this particular question, what the problem is, is we don't have the height of the um, trapezium. We don't have the distance between the parallel sides, which is equivalent to this here. Okay, because this is, these are parallel sides. This is basically the same length as that. This is also h. This can be considered h, the di distance between the parallel sides. We can actually use this triangle here to find what h is. So I know that from a to b is 12 centimeters and from D to C which is equivalent to A to this part here we can we can call this uh, for example call it E if you want from A to E is the same as from D to, D to C so this is must be 4 centimeters okay so I can find H using Pythagoras H is the shorter uh, side one of the shorter sides in this right angle triangle so I know that H is equal to the square of the hypotenuse minus the square of the other shorter side which is going to give you the square root of that's 64 minus 16. So h will be the square root of. Let's just. So you're going to have 
let me just do this in this way. So you've got 64 minus 16, and that gives you the square root 4 root 3, basically. So you end up with 4 times root 3. Okay? That's, that's the height of the trapezium. Okay, so we have to find the area now. So the area is going to be 4 root 3 divided by 2 times the sum of the parallel sides, which is 8 plus 12. Okay, so once I found the height of the trapezium, I can use that to find the area because we have the length of the other two sides. So we'll just take that 4 root 3 and we'll divide, uh, we'll divide that by 2. Uh, that's 2 root 3 and we'll multiply that by the sum of the parallel sides. So it's going to be times uh, 20. Times 20, which gives us 40 root 3. So we end up with 40 times the square root of 3. And we have to give our answer to 3SF. So we have to press the STD button, which gives us 69.282. 69.282. Now, why do we write our answers to 3SF? Because on the instructions page at the beginning of the paper, mentioned all answers that are not, not exact should be rounded to three significant figures. So this is going to give you 69.3 centimeters squared. So there we have the area of a trapezium. Now I'm taking a bit longer in explaining these questions uh, than I would do obviously, and you would do if you were taking the actual paper, um, because I'm trying to explain some of the foundation of these um, topics for those people who it might help them to understand a bit better. Okay, so there we have question number 17 and question number 18 can be found on the playlist, the link for which is in the description below. Thank you for watching.